You don't believe in the fate, uh, every day digging the grave, uh, stepping up here with the stakes, uh, city of dreams, city of Hello and welcome to this, the very first episode of Night City Wire, a brand new series from us at CD Projekt Red where we'll be talking about all things Cyberpunk 2077. For today's episode, we'll be starting with a brand new trailer. One of our developers will be joining us to help unpack everything you're going to see. We'll have some news, an announcement about a secret collaboration. We'll be taking a look at some brain dance gameplay and welcoming back our developers just to have a chat about everything you're going to see. But there is one more thing. Media all over the world have been getting hands-on with Cyberpunk 2077, and when this episode finishes, you'll be able to go and check out exactly what they thought. So, let's get started. It is time to take a look at our brand new trailer, and after that, our lead quest designer, Pavel Sasko, will be joining us, because I've got a feeling you're gonna have a few questions after watching this. So, let's take a look. I love this town, the city of endless opportunity. Ready to get your cherry popped? Yeah, come on! City like any other, just bigger. Nah, no, mano, not just any other city. Legends are born here. The major leagues. We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. But we are. They just don't know it yet. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Unless you catch a bull. Even then, you go out with a bang, right? You know, you can make heaps more eddies as a motivational speaker. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. So what's the gig, Dex? You meant to come out in one piece? <laughs> <laughs> How about we go over the plan? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm hmm. Arasaka. We are robbing some heavy hitters. Thought you could blackmail me, fucker! High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Cut team, baby. Goes without saying, we do this on the hush. Ideally, no bodies. Not a one. Sounds simple enough. Lead, assholes. Is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, my boy. We're bulletproof. Get your ass moving now! What the fuck just happened in there? Can't stop digging Night City. Fucking major leaks. Happy now, Jackie? Yep, yeah, I fucking high! Time to bail! Oh my god, we're so fucked. Dix! What the fuck? Game risk it, V. And you, who are you? Ah! Fuck. So the trailer contains footage from the game's prologue only, but there was an awful lot in it. So Pavel, why don't you try and help us unpack everything that we just saw? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely, I can try. So um, what you have just seen is only the prologue of the game. So that awesome stuff is only happening in the first few quests. What the trailer shows you is really our stage, the night city, you know, this gigantic city built of six completely unique districts surrounded by the seventh one that we call the Badlands. As a player, you are meeting Jackie. Jackie's your friend. Now, they together are trying to reach out for something that is very precious. They are trying to reach out for this chip of immortality, this gateway to eternal life. Jackie introduces you to Fixer Dexter Deshawn. He's a very important person in the social ladder of cyberpunk. He is able to provide the player with various jobs and contracts to be able to gather money, to be able to modify their bodies, push themselves to the limits, to put their hands on the chip. But uh, as you can expect, not everything goes as planned, and, uh, but to, to see it, you will have to play the game. There are an awful lot of really cool things in this trailer, and there's a few that I would just love to talk about a little bit more for the people at home. So let's start with talking about a gang called the Mox. Now, we see a few flashes of them in this trailer. I personally think they're really cool and one of my favorites, but can you give us a little bit more information about them? Oh yes, so uh, the Mox is one of the gangs that player is going to interact with throughout the game. The Mox is the gang that has been formed in 2076 after death of uh, Elizabeth Borden. She was called Lizzie. Now, she was an owner of a brothel 
and former sex worker and she was protecting working guys and girls from harassment from abuse and the gang is really continuing her mission and as a player you are going to interact with that gang meet multiple different npcs and craft your own relationship with them and understand what they are all about so earlier on you did mention a seventh district a place called the badlands now we saw a few shots of this in the trailer but i'd love for you to give us a bit more detail about the district outside of the city walls Okay, so the Badlands is this like dead, dried out space going around the whole Night City. And as a player, you'll be able to traverse that space in your car or motorcycle. This is a space that is inhabited by the nomads. Nomads are living in a different families and they are traveling across that space in convoys made out of the cars and motorcycles. And as a player, you'll be able to traverse and access different type of open world content that has been prepared specifically for you to like, get that awesome feel of the Badlands as an area. In the trailer we also saw like a completely metal creature. Now he didn't look like he was from the Maelstrom gang, this looked like something else. So please tell the people at home, who is this giant metal monster? <laughs> okay, so, so that big dude, that was Adam Smasher. He has been introduced in a pen and paper in Cyberpunk 2020 by our uh, senpai Mike Pondsmith. Adam Smasher is a fully converted cyborg. He is an, uh, he was always a loyalist of Arasaka. And uh, time has changed and in 2077 he had to find his own space in uh, Night City. But to uh, find out you'll have to play the game. In this trailer, we do see some flashes of a Ripper Doc called Victor Vector. I think if people have watched our previous gameplays, they might remember him. But I'd really like for you to give the people at home some more information about what Ripper Docs are and how they'll be interacting with them when they play Cyberpunk. So Ripper Docs in our game, they are surgeons. They are like a specific type of a job in the social ladder of Cyberpunk. Yeah. They are accustomed yeah. and specialized in replacing limbs uh, to the metal ones. They can basically update your body, enhance your body, change you into this walking war machine. And uh, as a player, you are going to meet different kind of Reaper Dogs in the, in the game, craft your own relationship with them. Some of them are like important characters for a, for a story. Through that, you will invest uh, eddies that you're gathering to turn your body into this tool that allows you to survive on the streets of Night City. Pavel, thank you so much for joining us. I know you'll be back later in the episode because you're going to be helping us to analyze the Braindance gameplay. But before that, we do have some news to share. Earlier in the year, we announced that if you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on Xbox One, you'll be able to play it on Xbox Series X when the console launches. And just in case you missed it, it will be the same for PlayStation players as well. If you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation 4, you'll also be able to play it on PlayStation 5 when the console launches. And that's not all. There will be a free upgrade for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, but we'll have more details on that soon. Tonight City. Before we reveal our first look at the Brain Dance gameplay and welcome back our developers for a chat, there is just one more thing we want to announce. Something that we've been working on in secret for a while. We are very excited to announce our partnership with Studio Trigger and Netflix to bring you Cyberpunk Edgerunners, a standalone anime set in the Cyberpunk universe, which we've been working on for some time now. Edgerunners is due to launch in 2022, but for some more information, let's go to the team in Tokyo. My name is Saya Elder. I am the Japan-based producer for Cyberpunk Edge Runners. What I do basically on this project is that I am a fixer, to put it in the words of the Cyberpunk universe. We are a game company. We are a bunch of nerds, and wherever there are nerds, there's gonna be anime fans. So it was always a dream for us to make anime. When we began this project, we were certain that we didn't want to make a recreation of the game. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a standalone story set in the same universe. The stage is still Night City, but everything else is totally new. New characters, new story. I do like to think that it's going to be a great gateway for newcomers to come and check Cyberpunk game and also the Cyberpunk genre as a whole. 
right now we're in Nakano, which is one of the biggest anime meccas of the world. Uh, I'm going to take you to Studio Trigger right now because we have the wonderful opportunity to talk to the Dream Team that will be bringing you this anime. え、キャラクターデザインを担当する吉成です。10年ということ Now it is time to show you some gameplay of Brain Dance. This is a feature that you'll experience when you play Cyberpunk 2077. Brain Dance is essentially a recording of somebody else's experience. It allows you to relive their sense of sight, smell, touch, and even hearing, all thanks to a special device. After the gameplay, I will be welcoming back Pavel Sasko, and will also be joined by Patrick Mills, our senior quest designer and all-round lore master, who will be helping to answer your questions and give you some explanation on how you'll be interacting with Braindance when you play Cyberpunk 2077. So, let's take a look. Plan simple, do nothing odd, don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out, and we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody, on the ground. I want to see you kissing the flooring. Muddy, now, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God. Well, yeah, hey, uh, uh, now, before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. I felt, I could feel the guy's pain, his dress, his hope, hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. All scenes yours. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback. Can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out, and we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind, roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on the creative. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat. The gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. 
You go in, snatch the cash, get out. Let me sell. We need to go cycle free. And remember, take a full That's why you're going to leave Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now, heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything, every little detail, even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and uh, surf and Everybody! So, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them, makes them pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Ah, what a sheer kiss in the flooring! Money! Never. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the rollers cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello, nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. Alright, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Oh, where I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, I'm gonna take my fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own Chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the log. So Braindance is a pretty big part of the cyberpunk universe. It's not just something used for adult films. There is an awful lot to it. And there's two sides I'd really like you guys to help me explore. First is the lore. So how this actually fits into the universe. And then there's the gameplay side. So how players will be interacting with it. So Patrick, could you tell us more about the lore of Braindance? I would love to. Uh, so in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, Braindance was invented way back in the early 2000s at UC Santa Cruz. It was developed as a way of recording a person's experiences and then playing them back for someone else as, so that they could relive them as though it was happening to them. It was originally used for things like therapy and prisoner rehabilitation, but by 2077 it's become this global media industry, including things like movies, mass, mass entertainment, things like that, video games, some interactive things and of course adult fare as well. Now in our game we deal a lot with black brain dances or XBDs as we call them and there are different types of those but the one that you saw in the trailer just there was a flatliner. Now that's where the person recording it actually dies during the recording and it's popular with sort of an illicit kind of a thrill but a mercenary can also use them for various things and you'll see that in the game of course. And from the gameplay perspective, we have been working a lot throughout last years trying to figure out the best way how to use the brain dance in the game as a mechanics. So what we have settled on is this brain dance editor mode. As a player, you will be able to run the brain dance in the editor mode and see different clues that have been registered on the peripheral of given actor. 
Now, as a player, you can slide on the timeline of the recording, back and forth, trying to uncover different clues. And that clues are actually telling a story in the game. So, as a player, you will run different investigations that will lead you to uh, different mysteries, and you will uncover them actually using that brain dance as a mechanics in the game. So, as Pavel was saying, we use brain dance as a storytelling tool. It's not a collectible, it's not something where you're gonna go in and you're gonna play it and you're gonna be like, ah, I've seen this before. What we use brain dance for is to give you a keyhole into the life of the residents of Night City. And we can explore things like childhood trauma, religion, various philosophical ideas in a way that you might not otherwise experience in a story about a mercenary on the tough streets. So we've tried to talk about some of the aspects that we think the community will find really exciting, but you know, while you're both here, I'd love to know what is it about Cyberpunk that you guys are really excited for? Uh, Patrick, why don't you start? So one of the things that I'm most excited about in this game is the characters and the way they interact with the world. We've got this really interesting world that stretches all the way back to the Cyberpunk 2020 source material and all of these events and all of those things, but those don't mean anything unless they connect with characters. And so when we come up with a character, we start with their function. What is this person? What do they do in the story? But we don't stop there. We go back and we figure out what was their childhood like? What was their upbringing like? What kind of obstacles did they face in this harsh reality and did they overcome them and how did they overcome them or did they not overcome them and why? And you can see all of those things in their environment, in their dialogues, in sort of how they operate in the world. And we come up with that for all of our characters. Now you look at someone like Victor Vector and you're going to see stories about his past in his environment and in his dialogue. You know, we come up with that stuff even if we don't use it in the game because it helps inform us as to who these characters are. And uh, for me, I, I would not be myself if I would not say that I'm the most excited about our quests. Like with our Witcher 3 team, with, with Patrick and like everybody that has stayed with us since the Witcher 3 time, we really have grown so much. Uh, we have learned so much and we have used all that experience to put them into the quest that we have made and you will not find really a, a filler in this game like everything has a meaning like we put so much effort into making sure that everything is rewarding is interesting is talking about characters as patrick said it's talking about worlds it's talking about emotions like touching the player in a really like a real way um and i just can't wait to find out what you think Pavel, I know you mentioned story and, and quests and writing quests. And when I was last in the studio, I had a look and I saw a notebook on your desk. And I would love for you to show everybody this notebook. <laughs> okay, Holly, I mean, you asked for it. So um, this is uh, my notebook. It says uh, Salsa Quest Designer. Uh, the reason is because I dance salsa and I'm a quest designer. So, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, so I wrote, started this notebook actually when we were really starting Cyberpunk. At the very beginning, I wrote the, like a first note and it says pretty much something around, along the lines of a, that we were starting with a prototype. And then, you know, I kept on uh, basically noting things that we've been working on um, for like next years. I remember once when our concept artists actually approached me and they said that they want to take a look at my notebook. I was like, what for actually? And they, they, they took some pictures um, and they told me, uh, yeah, well, you know, because we are looking for a reference material for a, a notes of a psychopathic killer. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, well, uh, you may um, find maybe some of my notes um, in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Pavel and Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. I'm pretty lucky because I have read some of the stories that you and the team have written for Braindance, and I'm pretty excited for people to discover them. But uh, before we do finish today's episode, there is just one more thing we'd like to talk about. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned that media have been getting hands-on with the opening of Cyberpunk 2077, and they should be posting their impressions right about now. And if you missed anything from today's episode, don't worry, we'll be uploading everything to our channels very soon. And finally, on behalf of everybody at CD Projekt Red, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us for this the very first episode of Night City Wire. But don't worry, we'll be back with episode two in just a few weeks. So we shall see you soon.
Green City. Hello and welcome to episode two of Night City Wire. This is the show from us at CD Projekt Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. In today's episode, we're going to be deep diving into Life Pass and showing you a brand new gameplay video, as well as having a chat to Philip from our quest team. Then we're going behind the scenes and taking a look at how Refused are bringing the band Samurai to life. And then we're showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. So let's get started. Street Kid, Nomad or Corpo? Which will you pick first? Grew up in Haywood. Whole street was my family. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing of it. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories. Hopping buildings. Running away from badges. Iron tasted blood from a split lip. Motherfucker! Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the fuck out of Vista. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tubers. Do you want to spend the rest of your days blasting scabs? Or become a legend overnight? We have arrived. The Major. Ready to get your cherry bobbed? Yeah, come on! Childhood, I see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. We nomads choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Miss this, you know? Camarado. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in Night City. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. have those reports you asked for. They were supposed to be ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me. No, I'm not fucking joking. This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work in our Arasaka counter intel, you're always fucked. Today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? You wanna be top? Gotta have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. It's a borough where Asaka is. And you're the pendejo who keeps him there. Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. It is so good to see you again. It's actually been a while since I've had a chance to interview you about cyberpunk. So I think for today, we'll start with a question that everybody wants to know. How does the path you pick affect your time in Night City? It actually affects your time quite a lot throughout the whole game, but let's start at the beginning because basically our game has three different starts depending on your life path. Uh, as an example, if you choose the street kid life path, you have lived most of your time in Night City. 
you know the streets, you know the gangs, you know the slang, you kind of know what's going on in the, let's say, lower life aspects of the city, which can of course give you lots of good opportunities also later on in the game. Uh, but if you start as a nomad, you actually used to be part of a nomad clan and a nomad family. Because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City, that we call the Badlands, actually value their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually left that family behind. And now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City and how to make a new life there. Then you can also choose to actually be a corpo and choose the corporate life path. And that basically means that you're not at home in the streets of Night City or in the deserts of the Badlands, but actually inside the boardroom, because you rose the corporate ladder of the Arasaka Corporation, which basically gives you the ability to sometimes, you know, read between the lines, read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many nice opportunities later on. So this isn't just about the start of the game. Can you maybe help people understand how this translates into the gameplay? Yeah. So the thing is, we make Cyberpunk a real RPG. And part of that is that you can play your character from the start to the end. And of course, you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but we wanted to make it so you have your life path opportunities throughout the whole game until the, the game is over. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional options in dialogues. So I can give you one specific example. And this is a mission where you have to steal a flathead robot from the Maelstrom gang. Basically, those Maelstromers stole that flathead before from a corporate transport. And the owner of that corporate transport, Meredith Stout, wants you to do something else. And this is an optional objective. And even within that objective, we want to give you some options. So as an example, if you have a corporate life path, you basically know what Meredith Stout is really about. You can read between the lines and you can get some additional options that maybe actually later enable you to do a completely different thing with the Maelstrom gang. And if you're a nomad, you know exactly some more details about how these Maelstromers would have even been able to steal a robot like that from Meredith Stout, who's part of the very powerful Militech Corporation. As a street kid, we as an example don't give you a specific new dialogue option in that dialogue because as a street kid, you do not have a lot of experience dealing with higher up people like Meredith Stout. But we want to give you additional options that fit your life path very well. So later when you actually talk to the Maelstrom gang, one member of the gang offers you some illegal substance but as a street kid, you actually know what this is about. You can talk some shop with him, and that might actually make that character like you a little bit more. So Philip, I do have a couple of extra questions for you based on the video we just saw. And the first is about nomads. So the nomad life path, this starts in a place called the Badlands. Is this somewhere you get to visit even if you don't pick nomad to start with? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the thing is, Night City is surrounded by this huge landscape that we call the Badlands and you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the Nomad Life Path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can be a pretty dangerous place at first because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past, there's global warming, so most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it, or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. We of course also want to tell their stories, because we want to tell many, many different stories throughout the cyberpunk genre, which means that you will also find missions that lead you out in the Badlands, or where you deal with the people living there. So Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial, so Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in, so you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers, who is called Dexter Deshawn, and he works in a different part of the city. So specifically Padre, you might know him as a street kid, 
but even if you played other life paths, you might sooner or later meet him because he's operating in Haywood, which is a pretty big place with many good jobs. So if you want to make some cash there, you will sooner or later deal with Padre. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Now on my first playthrough, pretty sure I'm going to be picking Nomad. But for those watching, we would love to know what you'll be picking. So have a think about it and send us a tweet. Don't forget that later in this episode, we're going to be showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. But before that, let's talk about music because music plays a huge part in bringing Night City to life. Now in future episodes, we're gonna talk about things like radio stations and even the original score. But today, we're gonna to take a look behind the scenes at how refused to bringing Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai, to life. I wouldn't write these lyrics for myself. In a willing, so it's kind of interesting to, to get into like the mindset of who is this character and what would they write about or what, what, what's their agenda. It's interesting to, to try to like catch a language that, that's his and try to catch a language that's like a part of this game. There is a reason why we're here. It was Piotr, maybe, who was a fan of the band. He knew Refuse and he knew my voice, and he said, oh, that's a perfect voice for, for Johnny. And that they wanted, I guess, a sound that was a bit contemporary from when it's when Johnny's supposed to have had the band, because he's sort of like an anti-establishment kind of guy. Gonna drag a corporal rat on stage, make him kneel, douse him with gas, and light him up. So of course there are things that you can relate to, and like just like this outcast and this rebel that's fighting against like the, the corporals, and that's definitely something that's been a part of my life and a part of the fuse life. We came out of the punk rock scene of uh, northern Sweden. He's like the future version of us. You know? So I, I think it makes sense. I think it totally makes sense for us to be here making these songs about him or for him. You know? So it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, 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 no trills. But yeah, but like wide vibrato. And then I mean, just sort of feel, I mean, yeah. slowly build some intensity. We don't have a different mode than just going all in. So we're, we really work on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. But then they're not actually our songs. It's interesting as, as a musician to play another musician, because that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, we're not here as Refuse, we're here as Samurai. And I'm here with Johnny <laughs> Silverman, you know? So it's like the voice we're representing here is someone else. We'll never fade away! It's uh, been a mind fuck. I mean, the shouting in itself is just like second nature to me because I've been, I've been doing this for a very long time. But then when someone comes in and says, I'm happy with everything except for Azza Lin. Again, it's Azza. 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 Okay. I think we had it earlier, but let's do one more. Okay. The shouting's great, but think of that accent or think of that like enunciation. It's a bit weird because it is a, it's a very different way of singing when, you, when you're screaming like that and it's hard to sort of... You're swallowing some syllables there. Adjust your accent. Oh uh, yeah, just try it again. So it's, it's been a bit uh, kind of frustrating. <laughs> it, it wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. But I mean, I get it. I mean, we, we have to maintain the illusion that 
this character that's a character of the game also is, is me, like when I'm singing it. So it makes sense, but yeah, it's, it's a bit different to have someone telling you exactly how to enunciate things, because I'm not used to, usually people are just like, give me a thumbs up, and then like, you know, you, you think the things like the rhythm, and you think about the pitch, and you think about all these things, but then someone comes in and like, that word sounded weird, I'm like, what? No, it's, it's how I sing, but, so it's, it's been a very, uh, yeah, a bit painful <laughs> at times, but it's all right. See it is soon, I'm chipping in, roll the boots, I'm chipping in, Bet that gold, I'm chipping in. It's a very interesting thing to be part of. As, as a person that's not a gamer, I don't think I fully understand the impact that this might have. If people like these songs and if people are excited, that, then that's gonna be great. I mean, we, we are spending a lot of time trying to get this right, trying to get it to sound like, you know, like samurai would sound, you know, so it, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a very different way of, uh, of, uh, of, of making music, actually. You can already find three Samurai tracks available on streaming services, Chiffin' In, Never Fade Away, and The Ballad of Buck Ravers. But we're excited to announce a fourth new song called Alike Supreme, which is coming to streaming services today. That means you can check it out once the show is over. Don't forget that if you're tuning in late, or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channel soon. Next up, Pavel and I are going to introduce you to some creative ways that you can solve problems in Night City. AV, hey I have a job for you. A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. It could get hot, very hot. The gun dealers on Maelstrom. Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with them. You better gear up for this. Are you willing? Yeah, I'm in. Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Now, there was an awful lot in that video, right? Because there's more than just guns. Absolutely. We have melee weapons, we have ranged weapons, we have cyberware, we have offensive cyberware, defensive cyberware, armor. We could talk for hours and hours about this stuff. I think just for today's episode, we should keep it simple and let's just talk about guns. Can you tell us uh, the different types of guns that will be in the game? 
So we have three distinct types of guns in our game. We have power weapons, we have tech weapons, and we have smart weapons. Now, power weapons are the most similar to contemporary weapons. One thing they can do, which normal weapons cannot, is ricochet bullets off of surfaces. So you can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding behind a wall. Now, tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows them to do is to punch through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. So Pavel, Cyberpunk doesn't just contain FPS elements, right? it's also a fully-fledged RPG. So can you tell us how you guys approached introducing those RPG elements into gunplay? So I can tell you one thing, Holly, it wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time merging the RPG and FPP side of our game. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons, everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more opportunities to defeat the biggest encounters that we've designed for you. So I have prepared a few extra questions for you, Pavel, if you're feeling up to it. Of course. Okay, well the first is going to be, how do you find more weapons in Night City? Like, where will players be looking for them? So I expect the players to look everywhere for new and exciting weapons. You can, of course, buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire catalog of weaponry that you can get. However, the best weapons that you can find will be taken from enemies or loot caches that we have everywhere in Night City. The weapons rarities range from common through uncommon up to rare and then legendary. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. However, legendary weapons are very specific in such a way that they possess unique abilities that you will find on no other weapons in the game. The players will actually need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons that they want or to spare them because they like them as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the game. One of them would be modifications that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silencers, and you can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They give you statistics advantage and they give you more opportunities in gameplay. The other part of mods would be software mods. Now these are basically small chips that you install in, the, in your weapon, and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy, or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level, so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds, to tear through that armor even faster. So I suppose for my final question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which is your favorite weapon so far in Night City? Oh, there are so many weapons that it's hard to choose just one but I can mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be Tsunami Defense Systems, who produces the sniper rifle Nekomata. That's a tech sniper rifle. That means that it can pierce through walls, so it can actually hit somebody who's hiding behind cover or who doesn't even know you're there. Of course, I also like a close quarters approach, and what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that we have in the game is Budget Arms Carnage. Now, that thing is cast from pure steel and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say, is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels and that means it can track eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room was never simpler. 
Uh, Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm actually pretty interested to see what kind of weapons people discover when they uh, play cyberpunk for themselves. Before we end episode two, this is a reminder that those who wish to dive deeper into a lore can now pick up the world of Cyberpunk 2077. This is a brand new book created in collaboration with Dark Horse Books that will give you an extensive look at what makes Night City tick before jumping into the game this November. That is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channel shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back with Night City Wire episode three soon. Welcome to Night City Wire episode 3, the show from us at CD Projekt Red where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. In today's episode, we're going to start by taking you on a tour of Night City in a new gameplay video and have a chat with senior level designer Miles. Then we're going to introduce you to the gangs of Night City in another new gameplay video and have a chat with Mateusz from our quest team. Then before we finish today's episode, we're going to give you a look at some of the incredible finalists in our PC case modding contest. And we have some information that uh, PC players have been waiting to hear. So let's get started. It's time to take you on a tour of Night City. Hi there, new to Night City? It's not so bad here. How we feeling today? Cause I feel amazing. The food, the tie on 7th and Haywood, the pierogies down by the docks. Our home, our pride. And as always, your business is my business. And this is your World News Update. Endless possibilities and endless lies. We are fucked, America. And I don't know how we're gonna fix it. The homeless population in Night City has risen by 300%. Crime in Night City is now double the rate than in the new United States. You want to be some kind of hero? That's a fight this city won't let you win. On your own, you're fucked. Well, on that note, that's it for today's Info Flash. Sleep tight, Night City. The grass ain't greener anywhere else. Night City. What does it mean to you? How well do you know its history? Who was Richard Knight? How many stations are in the NCART system? Which city district boasts the best burrito in town? The answers to these questions and more can be found at the address at the bottom of your screen. Check it out and fall in love with Night City all over again. She pulls my Night City is one of our stars of this episode. There is actually quite a lot to talk about. So let's start at the beginning. How did Night City come to be? Because yes, it exists in the world of the tabletop, but uh, how do you take that and make what we've got now? Well, yeah, as you can imagine, making a city that is as big and complex as 
Night City is, is quite the ambitious project. First off, we sat down and we were really considering what is it that we wanted to do with Night City. In a way, Night City is the star of cyberpunk, right? It is one of its main characters. We wanted to make a city that is very, very believable, right? I mean, the word immersion gets thrown around a lot, but really, we wanted you to be able to dive into it and feel like this is a real place. And then secondly, we also wanted to provide enough variety between districts so that exploring Night City would always be fun, right? There's no point in making a city that is all, all same-ish and, you know, it doesn't really matter where you go because once you've been through one district, you feel like you've been through all of them. So for that, we first off started taking a look at the real-life geography that Night City is located on, and that would be on the coast of California. Knowing that Night City would be a coastal city gave us a bit of insight into what we would expect from the city layout. You'd expect the port, you'd expect huge industrial areas that would facilitate this kind of trade that you would assume a, kind, a city of this type would have with the world. And then we went through and actually divided the city into several districts, six of them. And some of them are based on the uh, original lore. We decided to give their own characteristics in terms of um, architecture, their demographics, the kind of people that would live there, and also the function within the city. Each of these districts, in turn, we divided into further sub-districts, which we further characterized using the more grand theme of the larger district. This process, I think, has resulted in a city that is feels quite alive, has a lot of character, where each district feels like its own distinct zone without feeling separated from the larger picture. And that results in something that allows the player to easily navigate even the complex concrete jungles of Night City simply by looking around and always having a rough idea where you actually are. But Night City is clearly so different from anything we've ever created with The Witcher. Can you give us some idea about, or some insight into just how big and like how densely packed Night City really is? Yes, um, so <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying that Night City is easily the most complex thing that I or the others have worked on. The city is super organic, right? It's not like a chessboard layout, but the, the layout of the city is crazy and you can tell that it grew in phases, right? Where buildings have been built on top of each other and uh, I guess the mega buildings that we have showcased are a great example of this. Um, you'll actually see that they are located on a, some kind of pillar you know, and then expand outside and then up, up high into the sky and underneath it you'll have space for other buildings. This yields a lot of interesting experiences when it comes to exploration and that's the one thing I'm most excited about for players to experience. We've been saying that our exploration is super vertical, right? But what this really means is that it changes the way you explore the city. Compared to our previous games, you won't be able to easily set out on a target in the distance, right? You won't be able to say, oh, there's a castle on a hill over there, I'll try to get there and then you'll be lost in the way. But here it's much more intimate, much more moment to moment. You might be roaming the cities and um, get a call by your fixer who informs you about a job nearby that you might be able to do, right? Or you find an alleyway and you walk down one of the many, many alleyways that the city has to offer and it's always a surprise. You don't know if you might stumble upon some gangers hanging out that are up to no good. Sometimes, and these are the moments that I often get surprised with, you'd even stumble upon the odd elevator that is meant to connect parts of the, you know, different layers of the city. And it's quite astonishing sometimes to see where you come out when you enter one of these and, you know, find that, oh, this is actually how it connects to the world. That's crazy. And now I'm here and now I know there's a shortcut that I can take and again this all serves to really enhance this sense of wonder that we all come to love from open world games and the whole city is built to cater to that. I mean you guys have really brought Night City to life and I really want to make a point of that it is a living breathing city so as a level designer can you give us some insight into those little touches that you guys have made because I hear you guys have even been placing rubbish by hand. Oh yes, um, we've been placing quite a bit of rubbish and that's certainly one of the more glorious parts of being a level designer or an environment artist where you get to litter the streets that you've spent time building with the garbage. But it's details such as this that um, we find really 
important to make the city feel alive. And also, we take great pride in the process of making this, right? We have a lot of fun actually placing a lot of what we call mini stories, right? These are little encounters um, that you can find when you simply walk along the streets. Of course, we have huge quests, right? Side quests, we have lots of side activities that you can do, but it always is nice to just kinda stop down for a minute and take a look at your surroundings um, that we have so lovingly created and try to see if there maybe isn't something that you can be a little detective for. Now, one other thing that I think is really, really cool is also the fact that we have um, actually named every single street in the city. So not only will NPCs be able to communicate their locations or the locations they want you to visit by sort of referring to the street names, but also you will be able to talk to your friends about it in that way, right? Have you been to Poplar Street in Japantown, for example? Um, and I think this is a small detail, but the philosophy that we have with these kind of things is that, you know, many, many small things contribute to the sum of it, which is hopefully then you being able to explore a city that you feel is truly alive and uh, that you haven't been experiencing before. Uh, well, Miles, thank you so much for giving us your insight. I suppose when the game launches, you could be an official Night City tour guide instead, right? I might be, yeah. You know, uh, if this game dev thing doesn't work out for me, I might, might retire and become a tour guide in Night City. Don't forget that if you are tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. Now. From the 6th Street to the Valentinos, it's time to introduce you to the gangs of Night City. You know how things work in Night City? The stronger survive, but that's how things stand. You're either somebody or you fizzle out into nothing. Then Z ain't a city that lets you get by without buddies. Be very careful, my friend. We are all so far from home. Which gang's the city's biggest and baddest, according to the NCPD? Scavs hold the body count title. Or Maelstrom, depending on the season. One time, a Maelstrom ganger killed a young kid right in front of my eyes. For shits and giggles. Chrome sucking psychos. And who the fuck are you to say what can and can't be? I'm gonna introduce you to our meat grinder. It's about time we had some fun! Big Maelstrom never forgets! Never! <laughs> I hate these Borg fuckers. Just a gang like any other, right? I'll take the Valentinos. They follow God and the Santa Madre. Honor means something to them. How'd you meet Jackie? We started out together. In the Valentinos? No, in the fucking Bible Book Club. I gotta give style points to the Valentinos. They have a punishment for every occasion. Gangster life, puto! Quick shout out to everyone in Haywood and Santo Domingo. Lately, the Valentinos and 6th Street have had a bigger bone to pick. 6th Street, why'd they want to wipe you? I don't know, can't fucking stand Tinos? Fucking stop! I've dealt with 6th Street before. We do the run, they'll transfer the cred. Come on, let's go before 6th Street shows up. Shut, shut, shut! Any more Second Amendment fans in the house, huh? Ugh, hate those bastards. Vomit lofty patriotic bullshit all day. Time to bring on the future. Any idea how many attacks from behind the black wall we neutralized? If the voodoo boys breach the black wall, we'll all be fucked. Voodoo boys? Urban myth, I thought. Just net runners spooking each other. No such gang. You know, I heard a few things about you. The voodoo boys, best runners in town. You do not steal from the voodoo boys. I see you, always. For them, Pacifica's just Haiti 2.0. Their own island, cut off from the rest of the city. This is our turf. Our home. Until last week, the animals crawled in. Animals are the craziest fucking gang in the city. Breaker star! Animals aren't the play here, are they? They're hired muscle. Someone else needed them. I fuck you over. You fuck the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the corp. See how this works now? 
husband's new Westbrook very high in the tiger claws. They did what made the best eddies, sold sex and black market tin. See a lot of tigers. They run this place. Know what else they do well? Break the knees of people who ask questions. I gotta do something! Shut the fuck up! The tigers will kill us. Come on, baby. Tiger claws killed one girl too many, so people took matters into their own hands. Folk went ballistic. Girls, pimps, outcasts, the whole freak show. It's how the mocks got started. Think you're some kind of gangoon now, huh? Us moxes have each other's back. We look out for one another. You looking for some company tonight? How'd you hook up with the mocks? I thought Susie and the gang could really change something in this city. Moxes and nomads don't seem so different. Both seem to yammer a lot about community, solidarity. Tell me about the Badlands. Not much going on out here, huh? Au contraire. This is an ecosystem. Nomads, wrapped in Shiv, corporations, and drifters, they form a complete whole. Remove one part, the delicate balance topples. Here in the Aldecaldos, it all stays in the family. Classic dilemma. What comes first, family or the outside world? This family will go to hell and back. Everyone in this city lives in their own bubble. And either you fly high or sink into quicksand. Mateusz, thank you so much for joining us. I have personally been really excited to give people a closer look at the gangs. We've shown a little bit on Twitter, but their styles are so distinct. Yes, I enjoy them a lot as well in our game. I think they're very cool. But let's start then with the kind of role that they play, because gangs really do play a prominent role in Night City, correct? Yes, definitely. The gangs, they rule the streets of Night City. You know, they have the newest cyberware, they have the newest weaponry, and they are really a power that everyone needs to take into account when they are thinking of operating in Night City. You will encounter them as you explore the city, of course, but also as you complete main quests, side quests, uh, different jobs for the, for the fixers. Uh, sometimes you might even get hired by them. But then, I suppose everybody's thinking then, can you join a gang? Well, V is a merc, and mercs of Night City are this unique, distinct group that stick mostly to themselves, right? And they get jobs from a variety of factions. They can get jobs from corporations, they can get jobs from gangs, they can get jobs from uh, different kind of like influential clients. Because of this, nobody will ever trust a merc to be one of them, right? So, and the gangs are no exception here. They are looking only for like people that they know will be loyal to them, right? And that they will fight for their cause all of the time, not just some of the times when it's profitable to them. So because of this, V will mostly stick to the afterlife. And the afterlife are this group of mercs, this legendary group of mercenaries in Night City. They get the best jobs, they get the most money, the best clients and so on. So if you want to become a legend in Night City, you are going to the afterlife. So we've obviously mentioned distinct style then. So does that mean there are kind of special gang themed weapons and items and clothing for players to find and use? Yes, definitely. There are different vehicles that you can drive, for example. There are cars, there are motorbikes. Um, then, of course, there are different uh, pieces of clothing uh, themed after gangs. Uh, there are weapons and so on. So yeah, definitely there are things to look forward to. I suppose as somebody who's spent as much time as you have kind of getting to know the gangs, I have to ask, which is your favorite and why? <laughs> so I would have to say probably Maelstrom, uh, simply because they have this unique, distinct feel uh, and this weird aesthetic about them. So the idea about Maelstrom is they are people who want to cross the boundary between the machine and human, right? They are changing so much of their body with cyberware that they no longer look human, really. On top of that, they are also very unpredictable. Uh, it's very difficult to say what they will do at any point when you meet them. Uh, at one moment, they can be shaking hands with you, and at the other moment, you know, they will pull gun out, gun out on you, and they bring in this element of chaos into the game, which I really enjoy, personally. Oh, Matty, thank you so much for joining us. It's always interesting to learn what uh, your favorite gang is. I think it kind of tells me a little bit about you. <laughs> oh, does it? <laughs> what does it say about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but for now, before we wrap up today's episode, we asked people to show us their creativity and design a PC case mod 
cyberpunk style. Our panel of judges selected five finalists and we teamed them up with professional case models to bring their concept to reality. These five amazing designs will be fighting for the main prize, an Alienware Aurora PC, along with other awesome gaming peripherals. Brought to you by our partners, Alienware, Nvidia, and SteelSeries. Let's see the mods. I absolutely love this one. The whole aesthetic works with each other. Absolutely next level. Honestly, kind of terrifying. Exactly the type of thing I would expect to find at a trade show. It really looks like it could have come straight out of the game. To watch the full PC case modding video and to get more information about when the winning design will be available on charity auction, stay tuned to our social media channels. Looking at those PC case mods, it reminds me that we do have one more thing to reveal. If you're going to be playing Cyberpunk 2077 on PC when it launches this November, we do have some specs to share that I think some of you have been waiting for. The minimum system requirements for Cyberpunk are a Windows 7 or 10 PC, an Intel Core i5-3570K or AMD FX8310, 8 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780 or an AMD Radeon RX 470. In the storage department, the game will take up roughly 70 gigs of space and although it will run off a HDD, we do recommend an SSD. As for the recommended specs, you're in the green if you're rocking Windows 10, an Intel Core i7-4790 or AMD Ryzen 3 3200G, 12 gigs of RAM and an Nvidia GeForce GTX 1060 or AMD Radeon R9 Fury. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 3 of Night City Wire. Don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels shortly and we will be back soon with episode 4. Welcome to Night City Wire Episode 4, the show from us at CD Projekt Red where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to start today's episode by giving you a look at just some of the vehicles you might procure during your time in Night City and having a chat to senior vehicle artist Paul who's going to give us a little bit more information before we take you behind the scenes and a look at the lengths the teams have gone to to bring vehicles to life. We're also going to have news on an exciting collaboration. Then we're going to be talking about fashion and styles in Night City before we recap the incredibly talented finalists in our cyberpunk cosplay contest. We'll then wrap up today's episode with some news about Stadia. There is a lot to talk about, so let's get started. In a huge open world like Night City, you need a chill ride to get around fast. And in Cyberpunk 2077, there are tons of cool vehicles to choose from. Get this! Four liter engine, six cylinder, goes from zero to 103.2 seconds. You fucking believe that? We've crafted every car and motorbike with amazing attention to detail. On the chassis, the body, not to mention the interiors. You can expect everyone not only to look unique, but to deliver a unique driving experience. All right.
right, show me what you got. Don't expect advanced tech or luxurious materials here. Nuh-uh. Yeah, it's not the size that counts, I guess. This class is mostly utility vehicles and low-end clunkers made for every pocket. Hold on, hold on. It's a wreck. I don't know. My damn wreck. Well, definitely no guy or girl, Mac. If you need to impress, look to this class alone. What you looking at? Tell me what you looking at. I'm putting my ride on the line. Either you match it in cash, or you can forget about the fight. With these wheels, no expense has been spared, no frill ignored. Their plush interiors decked out in all the latest tech, while you get to sit back and enjoy the ride. Masterful engineering and practical design. Trucks and tanks for when you need power and brute force. Hell of a machine. Neat beast. My pride and joy. And these monsters are literally unstoppable. These are for chooms who love the smell of exhaust and the roar of street wildlife. Their powerful engines and exchangeable parts make them perfect for tuning. Come on! I want to smell that choo-choo bird! Whether it's street racing, running from the NCPD, or just showing off in the streets, with these high-powered beasts, you will have only respect. Oh yeah, I like that! If you need speed and armor, the hypercar class is for you. It means precise bodywork, built-in LiDAR arrays, and really expensive materials. Imagine you're sitting on a pile of eddies. Probably less than a thousand people in the world can afford the Arendite. Not your typical urban vehicle. They will take you places you never dreamed you'd go. Oh, and original vehicles are not all you'll find in 2077. We also found room on our roster for some true automotive icons. Floor it, V. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. I think it's fair to say we've come a really long way from Roach and the Witcher, so that there's a lot to talk about. Yep, there's a lot to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Well, let's start with the various classes of different cars, because in the video we saw there were things like economy and luxury vehicles. But can you tell us a bit more about their kind of design philosophy? Like what does each kind of class offer when people are driving them around Night City? Absolutely. Uh, depending on uh, the variation of the car that you're uh, either buying or stealing, depending on your flavor, uh, yeah, you'll notice that they don't just look different. Uh, but they'll also drive different and feel different. If you're buying or stealing uh, a nice fancy looking sports color version of a car, you'll notice that it drives, you know, faster, sounds a little bit more punchy and sporty than, for example, a junkier version of that same car. You know, it can have solar panels tied to the roof or some other pipes that are hot wiring some other, you know, cyberpunk components in your car. And uh, well, you know, if it looks cheap, it probably drives cheap too. So it seems that not only do the cars uh, look good on the outside, but there's an awful lot of detail on the inside as well. Things like the dashboard. So can you tell us more about that? Because I know if you find a Quadra Type 66 in the city, it's going to look totally different from the Quadra Type 66 that the gangs are driving out in the Badlands, both outside and inside. Yep, definitely. If you were about to steal a very nice high-end car, for example, uh, when you get in, you'll see the dashboard light up nicely. You'll see your dial indicators revving a little bit. But that may not exist for a junk version at all. It may have the dashboard ripped out completely. No matter what your flavor is, you'll, you'll find something that suits your needs. So what about racing then? Will there be racing? Because I know people have been asking. Yes, we're absolutely going to have several races in the game. Different locations, if you know you're going to be driving in the Badlands. Maybe bring a Nomad car, because it's just built to driving in the Badlands. But if you know you're going to be racing in Night City, just bring the hottest wheels you've got, because you're going to need all the power you can get. No matter where you're racing, though, you need to bring a gun, because this is Night City and you never know what's going to happen. Okay, so you talk about bringing cars then. Let's talk about like storing and calling cars, because we know people can steal them. 
What if somebody's found a car and they absolutely love this particular one? Is there a way for players to kind of build that collection? And then how do they actually, you know, summon them? Well, uh, summoning cars works pretty much the same as you would summon Roach in The Witcher 3. Your transportation may or may not show up on a roof somewhere. Uh, but, you know, we're still working on fixing some bugs here and there. But yeah, if there's a car that you really, really like very much, if you can't wait to own a Quadra or a Type 66, you'll get a message from your fixer and says, hey, I've got a Quadra for sale for you, you want to buy it? All you have to do is drive over, pay the money, and you've got your very own Quadra. Not to mention that every single vehicle that you buy, every single player vehicle, is absolutely unique in every way. It's got a unique interior, unique exterior, paint job, um, you know, it'll sound different, but it'll also handle different. So in the video, we did mention there was space for a true automotive icon. Uh, do you want to reveal uh, what that actually is? Of course. The, the car in question here is uh, Johnny Silverhand's car. And Johnny Silverhand is, well, he's a big rocker boy and he needs some wheels to match. So we gave him a 911 Porsche from 1977, which means in 2077, Johnny's car is going to be exactly 100 years old. Well, Paul, thank you so much for your time today. Personally, I think I'm going to try and balance being a super cool badass mercenary and driving a Mai Mai, because I love that little car. I think I could do it, right? I could be cool and in a Mai Mai. Definitely. Mai Mai is absolutely cool, as long as you stay on the road and not on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my very best. We'll see. In past episodes, we've said that music plays a huge part in bringing Night City to life, but it's not just music. Our teams went to incredible lengths to recreate and capture the sounds that really bring these vehicles to life. I mean, we might have had some fun driving them, but I'm pretty sure that's just a perk of the job. We started with the visuals and then we wanted to like uh, attach a proper sound to the visuals so that you have like a nice feeling or a nice vibe of uh, the, the complete car. And then uh, we moved on to uh, organizing the whole thing. Early on uh, we made the decision that we are going to record on the racetracks and then we are going to record cars in movement. We started cooperation with Tomek Czoki, who is like a very, very well-known uh, racing driver in Poland. That's really a nice sensation when you're driving with a racing driver and then he pushes the car to the limits. Like, you can feel the, the Gs with the braking and uh, tight cornering and you can feel the car actually like bending the laws of physics. We wanted to record a broad spectrum of cars, so we started with the powerful muscle cars and then we went to uh, more screaming uh, tuned V6s, inline 6s and then we went to V10s. We wanted to grab the off-road cars, we of course uh, grabbed some uh, drift cars, just to have the more aggressive character in the cars. We had to assemble a sound group or a sound team that would make the placing of the mics process very, very fast because we had plenty of cars to do in a short time span. We had the team of mechanics from a rally team and they helped us immensely. What they've done is allowed us to put the microphones into places that we wouldn't be able to access uh, differently. Putting a mic right into the car they helped us to locate the places that are best. Usually place three microphones in the engine bay, three microphones uh, in the exhaust and two microphones in the car. Cars are very, very complex in terms of sound and uh, it's very difficult to get all the necessary components uh, that you have to have to make it sound believable. But we were trying to look for something that would give us the character of the engine. We wanted to use normal organic uh, electric engine that you could actually have in the nowadays car. We didn't want the engines to be futuristic sci-fi-ish sounding. We wanted much more organic, much more down-to-earth, something that would that represent the combustion engine. 
And on top of that, we added small elements like the futuristic horns or like a futuristic UI of a car. It makes you feel like you are in a car of the future and some car might talk to you, other car might have blips and bobs that will make you feel like you're in a futuristic vehicle. We wanted to be uh, very, very close to what Mike uh, set up in the lore. And uh, early on, we decided to record uh, Johnny's uh, original card, which is the uh, Porsche 911 930 from 1977. We recorded on dyno in control environment in a, in a chamber. We could put Mike in very different places. Porsche 930 that we recorded is the only car really that will be really sounding like the real car in the real world. We recorded more than 40 vehicles. Not often do we record so many vehicles for a game that is not really a racing game. Truth being told, this was the hardest part in, uh, in my sound career and I'm very, very proud of uh, what we achieved with the sound team. This was something that we didn't do before. So creating the designs, uh, creating the technology behind the, how the sound behaves, that's the best thing actually I ever did in my sound career. There has been a lot of talk about cars so far, so let's take a look at another collaboration. This time with Johnny Silverhand. Um, <laughs> I mean Keanu Reeves. The smell. The travel. Yeah. Journey. Freedom. I'm Gard Hollinger. I'm Keanu Reeves. And we're here as uh, representatives of Arch Motorcycle, and we're doing some audio recording for Cyberpunk 2077. Arch Motorcycle is a custom production motorcycle company. Uh, what's unique about it is that the motorcycles are built on a production platform, but each one is designed to be able to be personalized uh, for each customer. When uh, CD Projekt Red approached me about doing Cyberpunk 2077, they also spoke about integrating, they were fans of, uh, or I guess people who worked at the company were fans of uh, Arch Motorcycle, and so they broached the idea of creating kind of specialized Cyberpunk 2077 version of the Arch Motorcycle. And I thought that was a very fine idea. We have a motorcycle we've, we've designed and we've been developing called the Method 143 and so that I think in particular was was um, a creative inspiration for the designers so they sort of used that as a basis and then went further so it has a totally different crazy looking power plant. We did a little customer there. <laughs> it's good, I like it. <laughs> Today we're capturing sounds, getting some actual sounds of a power plant, drivetrain, and characteristics of the motorcycle, which I'm sure they will, you know, have play with and stuff, but the source will be pure. It has a sort of a racing engine in it compared to our production motorcycles. It has a, a dual exhaust system. And it sounds pretty. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I could definitely blindfold to tell that that's the method 143 ish sounding motorcycle, yeah. Nature of the 
role-playing aspect of the game. I think it'll be cool like to be on a bike and hearing that going through the city streets and getting into the madness and mayhem. As with all episodes of Night City Wire, if you're tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. Now it's time to talk about styles in Night City. Are you more kitsch or neo-militarism? Welcome to the brief authoritative history of Night City. This chapter is devoted to so-called styles, deeply linked with the history of the world and a very important aspect of life in the city. You can find them everywhere. In cars, clothes, guns, implants. They are your war paint. As one of our sponsors says, it matters not if you're dead as long as you're doing it in style. The moves on this girl! Swoosh, swoosh! Slicing them up like sashimi! Four visual styles are evident in the Night City of 2077, each with its own history, status, and features. Neon hair, illuminated tattoos, and chrome. Function comes second. Looks are what matter. And we got another day ahead of us in this city of dreams. The fourth corporate war broke out and entropism was born. Vast and deep crises forced people to find ways to survive by any means. Getting the job done, no matter how, was the primary goal. The look? Who cares? I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. Fuck them, fuck this job, fuck this city. Deadly elegance without ostentation. Corporate militaristic fashion, mostly seen in the wealthier parts of town. Substance over style, that's the motto. Celebrities, brain dance stars, business magnates, heirs to corporate fortunes and corporate executives. They abandoned the cold, deadly elegance of neo-militarism and returned to the roots of kitsch, but gave it a fresh, new look. Oh shit, these hands. Sometimes it seems like I just brushed something and sparks fly. Thank you for your attention. We wish you a very pleasant stay in our marvelous metropolis. Good luck and goodbye. NC's legends, know where you'll find most of them? The graveyard. Luckily matters not where you're from, matters not where you start. What matters here is the walk you walk. Just before this episode started, you might have tuned in early and seen our cyberpunk cosplay contest finale. But just in case you've missed it, we've prepared a little summary for you featuring our very talented finalists. In the cyberpunk cosplay contest, we asked our very talented community to cosplay a character from the game based on the art, screenshots, videos, cosplay guides, etc. We thought regular trophies weren't quite cool enough, so we decided that the top three will receive detailed props based on weapons from the game. 
They have been specifically made for this occasion, and the winners can do with them as they please. And now, the 12 best cyberpunk cosplayers who have competed for first place in the first official cyberpunk 2077 cosplay contest. Are you ready to meet them? Now, before we wrap up today's episode, there is one more thing to talk about. Previously, we announced that Cyberpunk 2077 was coming to Stadia, and today we can tell you that it is arriving on November 19th alongside other platforms, and pre-orders are starting now. Night City Wire is almost over, but if you do want just a little bit more, then stay tuned right here on the Twitch channel and join us for our post show. As always, don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels shortly and we'll be back with Night City Wire episode five soon. You know what, actually, there is one more thing we're gonna show you. Welcome to the diner. So what do you want? Supercar, big house, you wanna rule this city? Well, you ain't getting anywhere without an upgrade. You need a softer touch. Stronger spine. Just taking over Night City ain't gonna be easy. I'm in. Cyberpunk 2077. And welcome to Night City Wire episode 5, the show from us at CD Projekt Red where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're going to start today's episode with a new trailer that will take a closer look at Johnny Silverhand before we go behind the scenes with Keanu Reeves and have a chat to English adaptation director Boris who will tell us exactly what it was like to work with him. Then we'll be exploring the original score and talking about some of the radio stations you might listen to while driving around Night City. Before we take a look at the Jolly technology, which is powering facial animation in Cyberpunk, and unveil a new My Reward scheme, which anyone can take part in, no matter which platform you'll be playing Cyberpunk on. We'll then wrap up today's episode with a brand new gameplay trailer. It's a busy episode and it will be our final episode of Night City Wire before the game launches on December 10th. So, let's get going. Where'd you even come from? How are we even talking? Gotta get out of here, understand? And I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. You weren't dreaming, V. Those were memories. You two are connected in a way I can't make head or tail of. Who? Me and who, Vic? Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand. Real talk of the town back in my day. He died, like, forever ago. You need to say there's an actual terrorist in my head. Right now. 
Zelensky burned down half the city just to prove he was right. And burned the other half just for fun. What do you want from me? Huh. Destroy Arasaka. I don't even know what that means. Do whatever it takes to stop him. Defeat him. Gut him. He already tried to take over your body. You know, just for a little while. Hear me, asshole? A bullet to the fucking brain! Get out! Just get the fuck out! Tell me how to get rid of it. You don't have much time left. You're a dick, you know? And you're a cunt. Maybe we'll fit together after all. Sometimes we like to share things with you and other times we like to keep secrets and it can be worth it for that big reveal. Pretty sure nobody was expecting to see Keanu Reeves on stage at E3 2019. So let's go behind the scenes to see how Keanu Reeves brought rocker boy Johnny Silverhand to life. You could say it's breathtaking. Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand. I've had the opportunity to do voiceover a few times. I'd worked on a cartoon. I had done some documentaries. I'd never done this much. You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me. And I've processed some shit. Changed my mind. Don't want you dead anymore. You know, and got to play a character in so many kind of different ways because of different paths or threads or choices. So you almost get to play one moment, say you have a decision. Would you take a bullet for me? With three different behavioral attitudes. So that was fun. You know, he's uh, Johnny's either a dick or he's happy or he's trying to convince. You know why? Because you've always been a fucking pussy, Carrie. So it's been fun, and that was kind of what I was interested in. You know, the different options that the game could play. You know, playing the same person, but with different versions of it. Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. I've done a, a fair bit of motion capture. I did it with uh, in the Matrix films, so to start doing motion capture for Johnny. It was all very familiar to me. The only difference, I think, technologically, was how close they were going to real-time review. But creatively, it was very familiar in the sense of starting a, a library of, of gesture and the toolbox, let's say, for the animators to work with for the character. So you get to see Johnny as the rock star, you know, you hear about his military past, you know, and he's fighting for his survival. Yeah. So he's kind of got all of these things leading into the moment of this guy. It's really a kind of an interpretation, because I think there's a Johnny Silverhand in all of us. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a good sense of humor, if not a little dark at times. He's very passionate, he cares, you know, it's, um, He's kind of naive, but he's also super experienced in life. He's got certainly an appetite for life. Oh, no, you're wrong. He wants to change the world, you know? But he has a cause that he wants to fight against the corpocracy. Come on, don't tell me you're not interested. He's kind of looking for a different kind of freedom. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots. And now they're after our souls. At least I believed in something bigger. At least I had a cause. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me and the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen is that it's got a, a lot of freedom. There's so many different paths that you can play the game on. But it's not just quests of paths. It's like, who are you? How do you want to play the character? If I gotta kill, I'll kill. 
If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. You can go into action, you can go into mystery, you can problem solve in different ways. And where you go in this world, there's so much detail, there's so many different things that you can go off into that are really interesting um, and fun. There's a real drama to the game and emotional stakes to it. And then there's lighter sides to it. And of course, the music, production design, technologically, how cutting edge it is. I don't think there'll be a game that looks like this. Yeah, it's intense. I take the driver, you get his side too. Yeah. Bye bye. Before we get into what it was like to actually work with Keanu Reeves, was it always him that you imagined as Johnny Silverhand? Was there anybody else that you ever considered having for the role? Yeah, Holly, it was a long, arduous, extended uh, process to imagine uh, what Johnny Silverhand is supposed to look like, what he's supposed to sound like, what he's supposed to act like. Everybody and their great-grandmother seemed to have an idea. And the process actually involved a lot of people, the game director, uh, character artists, writers, marketing staff. Uh, I could go on. Uh, you know, we cast a pretty broad net initially. Uh, we considered actors. We considered uh, enlisting uh, actual rock stars, you know, band frontmen to play the role. At one point, we even toyed with the idea of taking and reviving uh, a recently deceased, longtime luminary of the recording industry. Now, some might say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could do that, technologically other or otherwise. Well, uh, I'll see you uh, that pipe dream and raise you another, because uh, one could easily say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could successfully pitch to and ultimately enlist Keanu Reeves to play the role. Now, I'm sure this is on everybody's mind right now, but what was it actually like to work with Keanu Reeves? Because even he said in the video, this was like nothing he'd ever done before. A question uh, that I'm sure uh, anybody who gets to work with Keanu has to answer, and I get where it comes from. Keanu is a consummate professional. When he's at work, he's at work. He's completely and utterly focused. To that work, he brings his talent, he brings his art, his technical skill, and overwhelming charm. And yes, the scale and the complexity were and are dazzling. Uh, Non-linearities, the variation in attitude, mood, emotion that are required to achieve them, they can be difficult to get your head around. And if you take all of Johnny Silverhand's bits, uh, you know, his screen time. It's like doing the equivalent of many, many feature film roles put together. And we covered all that in uh, a handful of mocap sessions and under two dozen VO recording sessions, four to six hours each. Um, and that took focus, it took control, it took dedication, all of which uh, Keanu provided in heaps. So tell us a little bit more about the character of Johnny Silverhand and why he's important to the story but also why it's important to have him played by like such a powerful personality. Okay, uh, how do I do this without uh, spoiling too much uh, for gamers? In the broadest sense, I'd say Johnny Silverhand is a co-protagonist of the game rather than uh, a sidekick. I mean, there are buddy bits in the game, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, Johnny has an agenda and he pursues it. And V has an agenda and has to pursue that. And for, to get things done, V and Johnny have to work together. Things, some of the things they do are V's and some of the things they do are Johnny's and some of them are important to both of them. That uh, bonds gamers, I think, to both characters. Uh, both characters' agendas become equally important. Uh, both characters' continued existence becomes equally important. For any a gamer or viewer or reader, what you have to do is create that bond between them and the protagonist or protagonist. You have to make uh, those characters understandable to them, likable to them, lovable to them. With that understanding, even when they do something not entirely admirable or say something uh, reprehensible, uh, you stay committed, you stay involved, you stay bonded to them. And there's no denying casting uh, a powerful personality, somebody who exudes uh, charm by the truckload, helps to further all that. 
So Boris, can you tell us like what does Keanu bring to Johnny Silverhand? What, what Keanu brings to Johnny Silverhand is nothing more and nothing less than Keanu. Uh, I could parse that into a string of adjectives, but I uh, kind of think that would be borderline insulting because it wouldn't begin to do him justice. To anybody who's seen the applicable movies, uh, Neo is Keanu, Keanu is Neo. John Wick is Keanu, Keanu is John Wick. John Constantine, Johnny Mnemonic, Jonathan Harker, Johnny Utah, they're all Keanu. And to anyone who will play Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand will be Keanu. To my mind, at least, star power is a fact and a, uh, an important factor for uh, broad sections of the audience out there. So can you give us more information about the process of motion capture, right? Because we saw you in the video, you know, doing some of it, but really, how does it work? Uh, but I, I wish I could, Holly, but I'm really no mocap expert, and I can, I, I can basically tell you what the day uh, looked like, what the process looked like to me. Uh, to me, it was a fine day in LA, and uh, I put on a wonky-looking uh, bodysuit with uh, uh, the, the globules all over it, and I put on the head cam, and then we proceeded to block and then play out scenes between V and Johnny and we did it over and over and over again. As we did that, I must have poked Johnny uh, in the chest hundreds of times, uh, and I must have uh, yelled fuck off at Johnny 35 times, you know. Uh, and, uh, well, I never expected to be doing any of that. No, I never imagined I'd be doing any of that. Well, Boris, thank you so much for joining us. I, your voice in the studio is quite iconic. So whenever I talk to you, I feel like I'm in a trailer. It's amazing. It's not all that. It's not all that, Holly. Thank you. Well, from uh, Soviet era synthesizers to body heat radio, it's time to explore the original score and just some of the radio stations you'll be listening to when you're driving around Night City. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games, and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. It actually took us a long time to find the right color of the music. Getting that sound together is almost as important as the actual look of the game itself, because the music is really helping you feel this emotional connection to the game. So one of the main ideas was to take the cyberpunk genre out of the 80s and give it a 90s flair. We took elements from rave, IDM, industrial, and make them fit our narrative purposes. We've decided that close to the 100% of our music would be purely electronic. That's why we tried to stick to analog synths as much as possible, so it's got a warmth to it. I'm super proud of the team we've managed to gather for this project. For me, it was basically my own personal aesthetic matching the aesthetic of the game. When I read the brief, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can be myself. I can make music and it, it come from an honest place. I love the fact that the music in this game is so varied. So we have some tracks that are super dirty, super heavy, and then we have some tracks that are very beautiful and ambient. I'm using all kinds of different effects. So it's been uh, great to be able to experiment with the sound and the style. It's my first time actually doing any drum tracking for a video game. It's been really exciting, it's been a lot of fun. It's all about making you feel like a perfect killing machine. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what you are, basically. Well, I can do that all day long, so you'll just, you'll just, you'll just have to tell me what you like and what you don't like. Cool, okay. It's not going to sound like one thing, depending on what part of the city you're in. We basically scored every quest, pretty much with custom assets created specifically for that quest. We ended up having over seven and a half hours of music in, in Cyberpunk. Working on Cyberpunk has just been insane. <laughs> um, I can seriously say that I've never worked with such a bunch of mad people in my life, and mad brilliant. The 
the gear that we use comes out of boutique shops or they are vintage synthesizers like this Polyvox. I really hope all this effort put into creating this score pays off with satisfying and enjoyable listening and gaming experience. Hello, Night City! What shaking Night Good City! Good morning, Night City! Your man, Stan here! Ooh, I love this town! Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her! And now, a shout out to all the lowlifes over at the Atlantis! Ladies and gents, here's that all time classic in Night City! Soundtrack is one of the key elements we use to build believable worlds. We've invited artists from around the world, incredible talents, incredible musicians, to write and produce songs just for us for this project. The soundtrack for Cyberpunk is insane. So the soundtrack being all the songs that they've got going on, whether it's on the radio or on the background, all these just amazing bands. We've got over 150 custom genre bending tracks all waiting for you to discover them by yourselves. You know, the reason I want to be a part of Cyberpunk is, well, basically I know The Witcher is super sick and then I actually got to play a preview of the game which was fucking incredible. I've always wanted to do something connected to a video game, so I was pretty excited when this came in and it was like an instant yes. I was kind of imagining what it would be like being a character in that game. The person that's a musician in this world in this time has grew up in that space. This isn't just some fun shit, there's also an intellectual and spiritual history to this world that's been constructed for you, you know? We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. Like, how could you not want to be a part of that? For those of you who can't wait to hear more from our composers, we're going to be releasing a special six track Cyberpunk 2077 EP featuring tracks from the game's original score onto streaming services for you to enjoy for free. And they'll be live at the end of this episode so you can give them a listen later. In addition, if you're planning on live streaming Cyberpunk, or if you just want to make videos, we want to introduce you to a new mode that will allow you to disable certain copyrighted tracks. We know that for content creators, licensed music can sometimes be problematic. So with this new mode, you'll be able to disable a small number of selected tracks which could cause some issues, replacing them with a different song, helping to avoid any problems. If you're going to be live streaming from console, this will start automatically, but you can toggle it on and off in the options as needed. And for PC players, you'll be able to turn it on and off in the game options. Don't forget, as with all episodes of Night City Wire, if you're tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. Now from Polish to Chinese. When Cyberpunk launches, it will have VO in 10 different languages. So we're going to take a closer look at the Jali technology, which is ensuring each and every one is as authentic as possible. So hi, my name is Sarah Watling. I am the CEO of Jolly Research in Toronto, Ontario. In this video, we're going to show you a little bit about Jolly the software uh, and Jolly in action within the world of Cyberpunk 2077. honnêtement, sans détour. Rayfield's mine. Скажи заплати два раза, заплатишь два раза. Jolly is a suite of tools and a suite of services uh, that uh, result in uh, what we think is the coolest and best uh, and highest quality facial performance on characters. Oh, is that supposed to sound familiar? It's automatically generated on a face based on um, audio dialogue, audio speech from a voice actor. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. What Jolly tries to do is it tries to get to the root of what is being expressed in the vocal performance and put that on a 3D character. That's Rogue. Best fixer in all of Night City. There is just an incredible amount of performance in this game. Next, sure. 
A procedural solution allows you to animate over and over and over again at tremendous scale. Jolly is what powers every single character in the game of Cyberpunk 2077 in all of the languages that the game has been localized for. All you're doing is changing an attribute. For example, speech style. If you want your character to, to shout instead of mumble, instead of issuing a set of commands that redo the animation, instead you click an attribute going from, in this case, mumble to shout. But you walk. You bleed. But you walk. You bleed. But you walk. You bleed. If the lip sync is right, you don't notice. If the faces match and match the performance, you don't notice because you're too busy paying attention to how awesome the game is, how much you care about these characters, how much, what, what you're gonna do. And that's what we want. That to me is, that's, that's the sizzle. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. Now we're excited to reveal digital and in-game rewards for Cyberpunk 2077. It's our way of saying thank you for your support. Now every copy of the game comes with digital downloadable goodies such as the art book, the original score and a digital comic all from the Cyberpunk universe. But there's more, you can also claim in-game items for Cyberpunk 2077. For example, you could be rocking the Wolf School jacket for simply connecting the game to your GOG account. And if you have other CD Projekt Red games, such as The Witcher or Gwent, you can get even more. And it works both ways. If you connect the game to your GOG account, you can also unlock special in-game items for Gwent, The Witcher card game, such as the samurai-inspired card and coin back and the breathtaking title. Now, this new My Rewards program is for everybody. No matter which platform you're playing Cyberpunk on, you'll be able to get your digital goodies and in-game items. Now, this is just the beginning and there'll be more items coming in the future and we'll have more information on My Rewards soon. As always, don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. So before we take a look at that new gameplay trailer, we just want to reveal that a number of games media from all over the world have been playing Cyberpunk 2077, and you'll be able to read their latest impressions when this episode of Night City Wire finishes, so you can go and check them out. So now, let's wrap up this episode and take a look at that brand new gameplay trailer. They got a lock on us. Engine's been hit. Get us out of here. I'm losing control. <laughs> At CD Projekt Red, we dedicate ourselves to telling immersive stories. Yet with every new project, we set out to make our games bigger, more complex, deeply engaging. Come on, V. Let's get you home. Cyberpunk 2077 marries exploration of a vast open world with kinetic combat, story-changing player choices, and robust character development, all to bring you into our vision of the dark future. You ever feel like the city doesn't give you a choice? You either burn alive in it, or you never existed at all. The year is 2077. An economic crisis culminating in nuclear conflict has left America in pieces. With most of the continent degenerating into lawless war zones, people from all over have converged on the already overcrowded Night City, one of the world's last great megalopolises. A hub amassing the best in resources and know-how, and home to manufacturers of cutting-edge technologies, Night City continues to offer the promise of a civilized future. What? No, no, this isn't happening. Oh, but it is. But in the city's streets, a merciless struggle for power rages. Gangs, corporate agents, hustlers, religious cultists, politicians, and all manner of criminals strive to outplay one another. Ordinary people get caught in the crossfire. Looking for justice in Night City. I seek revenge, much more feasible here. 
In this world, consumed by never-ending conflict, sometimes only an outsider will get the job done. Elizabeth tells me you have answers for us. I'm all ears. And that's you, an urban mercenary, a cyber-enhanced gun for hire. You seem to understand each other. Take this, too. As a mercenary, you swear no allegiance. You've chosen the outlaw life and trust that your abilities will carry you up Night City's ruthless underground social ladder. Heart of Night City. That's it right there. To thrive as a merc, you need the right combination of gear, skills, and reputation. Dex had a load to say about you. I hope he wasn't overselling. With the money you earn, you can turn yourself into a living weapon, buying guns and enhancements in the hundreds. As you roam the city streets, you gain the experience you need to upgrade abilities and acquire perks. Combine the right skills and gear to create a gunslinger with inhuman reflexes. A stealthy netrunner with command of all surrounding tech. Or practically anyone in between. In Cyberpunk 2077, you steal a prototype biochip that can set you up for life. Being filthy rich. When its sealed container is ruptured, the only way to prevent the biochip from failing is to slot it into your head. It turns out it contains the digitized soul of Johnny Silverhand, a dead rocker boy with violence on his mind. I mean to say there's an actual terrorist in my head right now. He's out for revenge. Aims to bring down the megacorp that made the chip. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. What is in your head can shift the balance of power in Night City. The high and mighty will do anything to lay their hands on it. Told you I'd end you someday. The choices you make will shape your story and determine how events unfold. V, you gotta take them down. That's why we're here. But not everything in Night City is a matter of life and death. Sometimes it's about style, choosing your look, your ride, your pastime, who's at your side. Choosing how you spend your dirty money. Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077.